And welcome back to the Spinner Rack. <laughs> Episode 51, spinner that's the Spinner Rack. <laughs> oh, hey, that place that I was telling you about with the Dragon Ball Z figures, they actually have a bunch of them. they got ones like just sitting in the bathroom for some reason. A it's spinner empty. rack in the bathroom? It's empty, but yeah, it's like... Just like a, a vacant spinner rack? Yeah, like they've got a bunch of them sitting back there. I was like, man, that's pretty freaking cool. That's that's just weird. It's weird. Anyway, it's Spinner Rack, episode 51, presented by Comics Remix, Breaking the Fourth Wall. As always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams. There's a bomb going off. Yeah, I was going to say, do you have something beeping going on? I, I think it was I think got, it was the laundry. Your, uh, your souffle is ready. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> As always, Big B, Brian Adams, join my co-host. Hungry, Junior Ruiz. Talking about spinner racks and restrooms. That's a really weird place for a spinner rack, by the way. It is, but I guess when your place is like really, really crowded and you're running out of room, but you don't want to throw it away. It was a big bathroom. Well, not big, but... It was spacious. It's spacious. It's bigger than you would expect a bathroom, an average bathroom to be. So, uh, breaking news. Minus like the tub and stuff. Just out of last week, did you see this? DC Comics. First is, of all, I want to apologize for not having having an episode last week. Oh, right. I, I'm totally anything. like we went a whole week with. I'm nothing. totally just glazing over the fact that we weren't here last week. Yeah. Um, Things happen, you know. Yeah. Alex, uh, on the other hand, had posted a review, so go check that out. He he kept the ship going. But he's, uh, he he's he kept us afloat, so yeah. to speak. I've also started really like cranking work on the new website, so. I'm excited about so that. So soon, coming soon. I would, in the near I would future. like to say, um, in in all reality, I would like to say end of summer, early fall. <clears throat> you know, and that's that's me being realistic, because um, I've also got to get you and Alex to sit down together in a room so I can show you guys. How right, to, right. How to work with that as well. Because so far, I've put all of Alex's reviews on there, and I've put some of our episodes, not all. Of them. I think I put all the locked up lock up ones on there. Nice. So, so you've got to like, we've got to have a little meeting, a little comic stream mix meeting. Very little now. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> <clears throat> Two years ago, there was a bunch of us. There's like a whole room full of people. In Karen, the camera guy's apartment. Yeah. That was a good time though. Drinking beer, eating pizza. Yeah. Looking at all of Carrie's toys. Carrie's got some nice toys. But anyway, so DC Comics is doing this stupid thing where in issues coming out, they're going to do half page ads. On some issues. Half page ads. Half page ads. Explain this to So you. basically, from the image I've seen, it's Kit Kat ad. Because you know Kit Kat does that left twi- or I'm sorry, Twix, not Kit Kat. I don't know why I fucking said I think I want a Kit Kat. The fat boy getting all crazy. You swore, man. Did I? Damn it. Yeah. Man, I just did it again. You have to bleep that out. Yeah. No, I didn't think about it. It sounds funnier when you want, when you listen to it and you hear bleep. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so it's a Twix ad, left Twix, right Twix, yada yada. I don't remember it's a celebrity in the ad, but they've literally taken half of the page. Okay. So the bottom half of the page is a Twix ad. Okay. On both, on two pages. And what's the top half? Comic. Wow, that is pretty, um, is it's anybody a- going to care? Uh, I don't know. I mean, when they reprint this stuff in graphic novels, you know, it's just going to be black. Unless they combine those two pages together. That is so stupid. You know, it is, it is stupid. I don't know whose decision that was. I want to know how much Twix paid them to do that. I would hope a, a, a decent penny. Because it, it looks like DC's needing that money because Convergence is an epic fail. You think so? Oh, absolutely. As far as the storyline, it's been terrible. Um, it's usually all the horrible things that I reserve to say about Marvel events. <laughs> I could, I'm going to throw just it. Go ahead and give it's it just, to it's just like, boom, this is all you now. You take it's, the trophy. It's yeah. They, they've taken the, the shite prize. It's, it's terrible. Nice. It's, uh, you know, I, I wanted it to be good. I wanted it to be interesting and it just really wasn't. It felt kind of forced. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the theories or not theories, just people's opinions that this was just something they did to break up the time like I told you when we started between the move from the east to the west coast yeah totally seems like a relevant and plausible theory to me um it was crap man even the tie-ins you know they did things and they got you excited because like there's fans out there as you know that like you loved preview 52 Mm -hmm. like Batman in my opinion was great preview 52 
Green Lantern was really good, even though they didn't change a whole lot, except for, well, what's not and what is continuity, which now they've answered that question, and everything is continuity. Good old Convergence has went in and just knocked continuities completely out of the equation. Like, everything um, exists. That's it. Yeah. Everything we've done exists. So, no day. no crises have ever happened. Really? They wiped yeah, out the crisis? They, yeah. All the way back to, to Crisis of Infinite Earths. Gone. Yeah. Didn't happen. It, so, was, it was stopped. So, the Silver Age, pre-crisis, DC Universe is a world. Um, then, the stuff that, I guess you'd say, we grew up with in the 80s and the 90s. The Bronze Age. The Bronze Age. You know... Or I like to say the death of Superman age, that still exists as a separate world. Then, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, zero Western hour would be that. a separate world. One. Like everything's become its own separate world. Um, so we're, you're gonna get starting next month, or this month. By the time this airs, it'll be yeah, it'll yeah, be tomorrow's the okay, first. Okay, yeah. So well, today, as this yeah. airs, is the first. <laughs> yeah. So it will be. 25 pre-existing New 52 titles with no new, the New 52 moniker is now gone. But the continuity. But the continuity, same. those comics will continue. And then, I believe, 20-something odd new books that I feel like, I'm not sure some of them will be in continuity with New 52 or if or not, but eh, it's, it's a headache. Unlike Marvel, Secret Wars streamlining their universes all into one with a nice pretty bow on it. You know, they've back to Convergence, like, the tie-in stuff, there was stuff I was really looking forward to, like, they were going back, Batman and Robin, pre-52. You know, like, I kind of off-subject, but kind of on-subject, when I went to that store yesterday, the first one I told you they had that Batmobile, um, on the table, they had the Convergence tie-in issues. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess it was, like, Convergence, Wonder Woman, Convergence, mm -hmm. Bat, whatever, and had all the variant covers that looked like the old-school news strips. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those covers looked like crap. Oh, nothing. the new strip covers? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I hated them. Yeah, I don't know what the... Now, it's nothing against the artist. You know, because the, the art that you could see was okay in the way I... The reason I say that you can see is because a lot of it was mirrored in shadow. Mm hmm And I was like, what is this? But the art that you can actually see was pretty cool. It, whoever is running things over there... They clearly, had them all just laid out, and I was like, wow, that looks like crap. Yeah, it clearly has no idea what the hell they're doing at all. Um... Like I was saying, the tie-ins that I wanted to look forward to, what like, did look sucked. Good was this cool statue that I want to, or a bunch of statues that were put together to form that? That is cool. It's like a Batman family setup. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like was Nightwing, like, cause he got like some weird. I forgot what Book Out called him. Oh, speaking of Book Out, he asked for you to give him a uh, shout out, or not a shout out, but you have to mention a Book Out. <laughs> not um. Anyway, while you're figuring it out, Batman and Robin was really looking forward to those tie-ins. Because I wanted, like, Batman and Robin, Dick Grayson, Damian Wayne, favorite Batman and Robin for years. Like, yeah. I thought that was so great. I was looking forward to seeing that, considering that book was supposed to be pre-Flashpoint, Batman and Robin, and it wasn't. And I think I've complained about it before. But, like, the tie-ins that you thought, like, I, I, screw that. All the tie-ins that you thought would suck, they all sucked. There was a couple that were okay. Green Lantern, Parallax, okay. Most of them just crap. Just throw away. Just throw away. <laughs> a go what? Seriously? He wants a Goonies shout out? Like, what? He likes Sloth. Like, uh, you just said you got a truffle talk. shuffle. There you go, buddy. <laughs> you didn't get to see it, but you got a truffle shuffle out the big man. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky Road. <laughs> That's right. There you go, book out. Oh, Ask man. and he shall receive. This is one of those times <clears throat> I wish we were still filmed this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Uh, so, hey, I, yeah. Secret Wars, been That's really good, man. He said that Nightwing statue looked like Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves? Yeah, he's like Keanu Reeves is Nightwing. It's like Batman. Whoa. Yeah, it's... Anyways... <clears throat> so Secret Wars, man, I'm like losing my voice here. <clears throat> Secret Wars, awesome. I have okay. not read the Hickman stuff building up to Secret Wars. Okay. The event itself has been really good. The tie-ins have even been good. 
And it's not like they've pretty much pulled like the same thing Convergence did is where they're throwing all these characters into a world and they're like, whoa, what's up? It's kind of like weird and confusing because things aren't like... I mean, they they pull it from a point in the pre-existing story and are like, oh, here you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the Flashpoint characters are pulled out and I, I feel like it's before stuff went down because so many people died at the end of Flashpoint. Right, Like, right. didn't Wonder Woman get killed? I know Aquaman died at the end of Flashpoint. Like, there was a lot of character deaths at the end of Flashpoint that... So Flashpoint When you jump on a conservative... Yeah, I guess not. It didn't happen. So it's really confusing. That's kind of weird because ridiculous. that's what created the new 52. Yeah. So, like, that's what created this world, and if the event didn't create the world, why does the world exist? Well, I'm not so sure right? that they're saying that it didn't happen... Because obviously the new 52 exists, but they're just saying everything's continuity now. I, so Flashpoint as a world exists. I would like to sit in a room <clears throat> with Dan DiDio, Jim Lee, and a couple other powers that be at DC, okay? With big chalkboard. Or like one of those big write-on walls or whatever. <laughs> and Some like dry list, erase markers. Yeah, and like, okay, like, and just sit there and be like... It would look like a college professor's chalkboard or something. Like, how does this exist if this didn't happen? And does this, if this, like, and just... It would look like those chalkboards in Rip Hunter's lab in 52. Yeah. Where it was just, like, a bunch of random shit and arrows all over and, like, what? It's another, it's another bleep. Yeah, whatever. No, man, it ain't whatever. I'll try harder. I apologize. No, we gotta bleep. I'm not bleeping. You gotta bleep. You know what? Bleep you. <laughs> it's funnier if you bleep. <laughs> You can go bleep yourself. <laughs> I ain't got time to do no bleeps. <clears throat> but anyway, so Convergence bad. Secret War is good. So far. So far. Um, well, that's the thing with not including uh, their Age of Ultron miniseries. Marvel events have had that where it builds up pretty good and then just kind of kaput at the end. Well, did Age of Ultron didn't even build up good. That's though. what I said, with the exception of uh, like Age of Ultron. Like I, I'm not a fan of a lot of Marvel events, which I've stated on this show a bazillion times before. This one's actually pretty good, and the tie-ins have all been enjoyable, and the Battle World stuff is even cool. And they did this silly thing with uh, Modok, where it was like a bunch of different Modoks from different like universals, and there was like a Spider-Man Modok and a good Modok and a baby. It was like just silly. Mm. It's like one of those stories where it's just fun. Kind of like, you know, that douchebag wrestler who wrote that Thor story that was actually pretty good. And the only reason that douchebag wrestler got to write a Thor story was because he's a douchebag wrestler. He who shall not be named. <laughs> <But> <laughs> moving on, and more in the world of the DC news. Um, Suicide Squad. Like, how could you take something... That's such a great idea. And you're like, man, this is going to be innovative and crazy. And it just looks like they're literally trying to take, like, crap and throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. Like, the everyone got excited. Oh, my God, they released footage of the Joker getting chased by the Batmobile. And it was like, the car, first of all, looks so loud and obnoxious. that it's like, are you Joel schumacher this movie? Mm-hmm. That's what, I mean, it was just like, and then yeah, the, the I, tattoo I things, and then the Joker looks terrible. People are like, oh, if you think he looks horrible, you've never read a comic book, you must be, like, retarded. Because that's not what the Joker, he looks terrible. Yeah. Like, I still hold out the hope that at the end of the Suicide Squad, they get someone that's really going to play Joker in the future, show up and kill the shit out of Jared Leto's Joker, because it's just wrong. And Harley Quinn, it's I don't give a crap what anybody says. Everyone's like, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. She looks like crap. You think so? Yeah, I don't like it at all. I like it. It looks like the new 52 Harley. Yeah. Which has grown on me. I yeah. still state the only Harley version that I do not like is the nurse Harley. The one, nurse Harley. The one from like the Arkham game where she's uh, just but as that's, a nurse. But that's a part of the story, though. Nah, it's not like, like she's supposed brain. it's just kind of part of the if you just, played the game you would understand well, no, it. I get that I just don't like the, great the games visual. by the way oh, great I, games. Yeah. Uh, I just, just got me the uh, Arkham Knights Harley action figure with the black dress nice I thought that was pretty sweet well see this is my problem with 
the Suicide Squad version of Harley is she doesn't even look like the new 52 Harley. Right. Like, she's got blonde, she's blonde with, like, blue highlights. All right, if they were going to go new 52 with it, black, do the black and red, man. Yeah. Do it. Do it. You know, why give them these stupid tattoos? Like, someone said, why do they need tattoos that, that say that they're, you know, rotten? When that should just be spoken no. for by their actions. Right, right. You know, so now people that have bad... This, I've seen a lot of this popping up on the Facebook. Is these bad tattoos. Like, you, you're... You know, your daddy got a tattoo and then he disappeared. Like, you know, you're evil and yeah. bad friends. It's like, just ridiculous. Not it close looks to like, the one about the moms. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks freaking horrible, man. None of the characters look good. They all look like they have were shopping at a thrift store. You know? <laughs> No, the only one that looks good is the Enchantress, and she doesn't even look anything like the Enchantress that was in the comics. I like how Deadshot looks. His outfit? Yeah. Yeah. The fit with the mask. That yeah, looks that's good. fine. Um, Will Smith looks like a badass with a bald head. Yeah. N- not as Deadshot, but just it just looks like. Yeah, a but then he's gonna make some Will Smith joke, and he's gonna totally ruin it for you. He's gonna be loading his gun and be yeah. like, "It's time to get jiggy with it." <laughs> but uh, no, I like Harley. Nah. I like Harley. Nah. Nah. Nope. Not for me, man. Not for me. I don't like anything about this movie at all. Yeah. At all. Nothing. Like, it just... The, like, that first photo they released just says it all. And then the whole Joker mobile thing with, like, the... Like, he looks like he should be hanging out in Tokyo Drift. <laughs> with that car. Yeah. And he just looks... Man, I don't know. Like, and you know, everyone can say, oh, well, you know, the different interpretations of the Joker. Well, yeah, this one sucks. Yeah. All right. Bottom line. This is the worst interpretation of the Joker ever. Ever. And people say, oh, people said that about Heath Ledger. And it's like, granted. Okay. I was one of those people back then who was like, oh, really? Heath Ledger? Yeah. I was like, ah. Uh. But then the photos came out and you were like, damn. Yeah. And then you saw the movie and then you totally did a Ron Simmons. Damn. Yeah. Because it was awesome. <laughs> But this, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Just, <laughs> So, moving on to the realm of good DC Arrow. As I say, there is, but yeah, then, yeah TV, man. They, yeah. They're killing it on TV, yeah. especially Dude, Flash. Before we get into Arrow, now that you say Flash, I haven't watched The Flash. Like, I, like I, you know, I, I've watched, like, the first few episodes only. I've told you this. Right. But I watched the season finale. I watched it as it aired live. Oh, sweet. Then let's just talk about let's, that right let's now. Let's do it. Because we're going to, I was going to talk about Arrow, but we that can go right episode, to, to see That whole man, this, yeah. gives you the feels, man. Congrats to those guys and gals on that show for pulling out the emotional acting that they pulled Dude, out that for episode. real. Anybody that ever discredited that show at all, like, the actors brought it in that last episode, dude. The scene with Barry talking to his mom. Right, yeah. If you didn't get all choked up, man, you ain't got no heart. Like, I, it, absolutely not. If, if you didn't get choked up at, like, 50% of the material in that episode, you ain't got no heart. Right. Like, there were so many one-on-one conversations between the characters that were, like, just deep and emotional. Yeah. And the acting, like, just, man, they just nailed it. Yeah, they did. And I don't know if, as a fan of that show and a fan of Flash, going to that episode, I was like, dude, they're going to Flashpoint us. And I was, like, excited to see how they were going to pull it off. And then they totally did. Like, I expected him to show up. And, and I thought the weird thing where he shows up to save his mom at the end. And the Barry that's already there fighting the reverse Flash. Like, it's like, no. Yeah. Like, it was like a like a warning almost. Like, you just let it go. Yeah. Like, so, so obviously he's been through it and screwed something up. Yeah. And was warning himself just to let it go. Yeah. But man, I think that'll be discovered second, maybe third season. Now, have you heard that there's talk possibly about? Well, they're gonna be exploring the multiverse. Are they? For sure. Okay. They've come out and said it. Okay. Well, they're, yeah, I liked how Jay Garrick's helmet. The Jay Garrick helmet, dude, that was awesome. He's like, oh, time for me to go. I was like, <laughs> oh, dude, oh, that was just a phenomenal uh, dude, Eddie, sacrificing himself. Yeah. Which they went out and also said that, just because you think, Eobard's gone doesn't mean that's the last you'll see of him. Right. 
but uh, they have said that they're going to explore the multiverse. There is rumor floating around that the Flash is going to get their uh, that they're going to do something with the '90s Flash. Really? Possibly. And uh, I think that would be great. Yeah. But that show is just phenomenal. Arrow, um, I felt ended strong. Um, coming back next year, the producers have already said that they are going to go with a lighter Green Arrow. Okay. As fans of the comic books know, you and I know that Greeno is kind of like a quippy character like Spider-Man. He does talk a lot of smack. He's a mixture. As he, he's he taking people down. the mixture, in my opinion, of the money that Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark have, but the Tony Stark personality. Okay, uh, that's a good... That's how I have always looked at Oliver Queen. Right. That's a, that would be a good, uh, good description. But so they're going to be going into lighter territory. And they gave us a lot of cool things there. His sister became Red, you know, Speedy. Okay. Which she wanted to call herself Red Arrow, but he made a joke about everyone calls her Speedy. Yeah. You know, he got to drive off into Sunset with Felicity. Diggle's going to be getting a, a, a costume really? and his own code name. Yeah. So that how long before he appears in one of the uh, the DC universes that now exist on in the comics? Well, Diggle's already, they've already brought John Diggle in to Green Arrow. In the new 52. Okay. He already exists. Okay. I'm sure due to popularity of the character on the show. Yeah. Now, Stephen Amell has Same also thing with said... Agent Coulson. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Amell has also said he will not... You will not see him in the Arrow costume again. The only thing I can think of of that is he's actually, like, the Arrow vigilante is gone. And he's and going to become Green, Green Arrow. Green Arrow, yeah. yeah. That's what I took from it. So then... And then you've got... If you haven't seen the trailer for it... Like, as soon as you're done listening to this show, go on YouTube Legends of Tomorrow. Right. If that does not get you excited, you're not. You're just not a comic book fan, dude. <laughs> because, man, that show looks spectacular. I've been kind of like, uh, you know, what are they going to do with it? What are they going to do with it? And then I saw that trailer, I was like, oh, my God, that looks amazing. You know, you've got the Adam, you've got Professor Stein, you've got Rip Hunter. You've yeah. got the introduction of Hawk Girl. Yeah. Which is awesome. She looks the actress you've got, uh, really hot too. You've got Captain Cold, who I'm excited that like, like the whole concept is these characters aren't necessarily heroes, but they're going to become legends. Uh -huh. And seeing Captain Cold kind of thrust into that hero whole, hero role, showing the side that they because they've explored that in the comic books. Because really, Captain Cold kind of walks that line. He is a villain, yes, but he's a villain that's got a code. Yeah, you know, and then some some heat wave. Um, and then the return of Black Canary, who is actually going to be White Canary. Yeah. Which I'm not sure they're going to explain that. I've kind of thought, well, does this mean they're going to get into Green Lantern stuff? But I know that they bring her back with a Lazarus bit. Really? So she just calls herself White Canary. I'm not sure why, but I really thought White Ring, White Lantern, White Canary kind of made sense to me. Um, going to be cameos by Flash and Arrow on that show um they, I, who's oh god I can't remember who the big bad is now what's his face the immortal guy Ra's the, Ra's the, Ra's no 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 Vandal Savage Vandal Savage yeah this you know CW is knocking it just knocking it out CW WB TV best combination ever um that Supergirl trailer dropped not too many people excited about that. Uh, it looked all right. Yeah. I mean, it's got character. We'll see how it goes. A lot of people pissed off that Jimmy Olsen's black. I, that's like I don't care. Yeah, it's whatever. Um, it's one of those things I don't give a shit about. Well, he was it's, a chick in Man of Steel. Yeah, so who really cares? Uh, the, I mean, it's kind of like people are like, oh, Johnny Storm, Fantastic Four, is black. that it. Like, I don't care about that now. But because nobody gives a damn about them. Yeah, movie no one general. gives a damn about that movie at all. <laughs> um, except for the fact that like. It doesn't make sense there because Sue Storm is white. Now, if they had made Sue Storm black also, their brother and sister, it made sense. Well, the way that I, I, I think she's adopted because isn't the dad in the Fantastic Four movie black? I don't know. I, I believe so. And I don't know newer, anything about that movie the except that it trailer, looks more interesting than Suicide Squad. In the latest trailer, I believe they, Which isn't saying they show the father. And he, I think he, he's black. And, oh, okay. Uh, so one of them is either he's black or he's white. And one of the kids is adopted. I don't remember which one's which. My last little piece of CW, WB TV news before we move on to our final little topic here, wrapping it up, is uh, Danielle Panabaker. Mm -hmm. She plays um, Caitlin Snow. Okay. 
she is going to become Killer, Killer Frost, Frost next oh, yeah. season. Yeah. So if you didn't see that coming, now you know it's going to happen. Which is kind of sad because I've really come to like her character. What I would like to know is, I mean, well, I'm sure everybody is on everybody else's mind, is the end when the Flash runs into this wormhole. What What's going to happen there? Because there's a million possibilities that can come out of that. Well, I think this is where you get that whole exploring the multiverse thing. Right. I think whatever it is, he, he is he going to stop it? Who knows? But it's, I think it's going to cause him to, and I'm really hoping that they do, like, someone online was like, wow, why can't they do an episode where he gets, like, sucked into an episode of the 90s TV show? <laughs> and I was like, that would be, That'd be really cool. totally interesting, man. You know, speaking of TV show crossover, since we're on DC, last week, Harley and I were flipping through the channels, and every so, you know, like, Cartoon Network plays the crap out of Teen Titans Go. Yeah. There was an episode that was on. We we were one of those fortunate that we caught it at the very beginning. Dude, they had a crossover with the quote-unquote Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I saw that. Hilarious. I saw that. You enjoyed that, huh? Oh, man, that was great. That was great. That show's actually not terrible, I mean. Did you see the one where uh, they always... They wondered why they've never seen Robin without his mask. And he's got like that perfectly like awesome that chiseled yeah. face. Yeah. yeah, dude, that was hilarious. That's a good show. It's a good show, man. It's you know, it's surprisingly has something to offer people that aren't ten years old. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good. One. You know, oh god. Speaking of ten years old, real quick, I just got to throw this in there. M Night Shyamalan. I read this thing where he was defending Avatar: The Last Airbender, the mm-hmm. movie, and he said that the reason people didn't like it is because he made it for ten year olds. And people are like, how the fuck can you blame that shit on 10 year olds when it's a, it's a show from Nickelodeon, a kid's channel, but adults still got into it because the show was bigger than that. So he's trying to blame it that, oh, people wanted it because it wasn't Michael Bay eyes, people didn't get it. That if people, you know, the reason that Transformers was so huge is because those 10 year olds are now 30 something, 40 something year olds, and they all want to see, you know, big explosions in Megan Fox. Well, guess what, mother... I don't want to see Megan Fox. Okay? Those movies sucked. Screw you. And that Shyamalan Ding Dong. I don't like that guy. I can tell. Unbreakable was awesome, though. Yeah, it was. Like, how do you make a film like that and then just suck so hard from there on out? Like, The Village, really? Plenty of suckage there. Come on. So, finally... Oh, <laughs> Michael Bay. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. See, here's the thing with this. We can go into, like... Uh, your, does your face hurt? Yeah. You got, like, three minutes. <laughs> so get it out of your system. No, no. It's, it's, it's just one of those things where this episode and this week's le- episode of The Lockup are going to cross over. Totally. Because of this last bit of news, as well as Stephen and Mel being on Monday Night Raw this last week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. See, it's we'll, crossovers, we'll talk about crossovers. That. It can well, be on either episode. We could almost just save this. Save it. I mean, you know, we'll throw out right here that, that if you've seen Undercover Brother, <laughs> okay, which I'm a fan of, I honestly, it really sucks that I'm a, I feel like a douche. Gary Anthony Williams. Yeah. He played Smart Brother and Undercover Brother. I'm not exactly Wasn't he in the sure. Wire? Was, was he on The Wire? He was on and a, I don't another think show. He was on The Wire because I watched The Wire and I don't remember. I don't remember seeing him on the wire. Well, you really got me like on task here. I'm like <laughs> stopping f bombs at the lips. Good. What did I say? His name was? <laughs> That's nice, Gary Anthony Williams. Look at us. We're like both googling away. Well, he's Uncle Ruckus on Boondocks. Okay, yeah, Uncle Dude. I love that guy. Yeah. So the, the, the white, the white Jesus. Thank you, white Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. He's on Malcolm in the Middle. Okay. Um, the little boss legal was in Soul Play. He was on an episode of uh, CSI. Uh, he was uh, on Boston Legal. Apparently he was in the internship. Yeah. If anybody saw that movie, the Google movie. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Okay, so basically... He also like, voiced Riff Tamsin on the opening three episodes of season four of the Star Wars Clone Wars series. Really? Yep. Nice. Well, it, it seems like he was just... Did Mongol on Brave and the Bold. Nice. 
So he's just he's been done around. two and a half men. How I Met Your Mother. He's just done little things. Doc makes stuff is so. I guess it wasn't wrong of me to say that you'd best know him as right. the Smart Brother from Undercover Brother. That's television. Hold on, I want to see his film career. But uh, he's gonna be Bebop. Bebop. That's the first one they got him as on uh, Wiki. They got him nice. as Undercover Brother. Which is uh, dude, that was Kumar a great. Hey, playing. Undercover, Undercover Brother. <laughs> That was the right musical there. interlude for the episode. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, so that's our news. We're going to continue this Wednesday, come back Wednesday, and we'll talk a little more Turtles on the Lockup, surprisingly. I will say, though, that he does look good as Bebop. He does. As the human Bebop. From the photos that I've seen, and. It looks like they're keeping it very close to what his, it is. His counterpart, like. Rocksteady. It actually brings a little bit of excitement to want to see an otherwise, in my opinion, a horrible franchise. So, but we'll see. We'll see. Word. So. Don't forget, we have a petition up, JDF versus CM Punk. Yeah. We're trying to get uh, as many signatures and people to share it as possible. So, please go to our Twitter, go to our Facebook, Comics Remixed, and um, and Spinnerack on Twitter. And, sh- and just share, retweet, sign the petition. It takes 20 you know, seconds out of your day. Yeah, totally. It's really you know, takes what, it, like 20 seconds. It's, you know, it's about seeing the fight because we all want to see certain somebody get punched absolutely. in the mouth. But at the same time, if you're fans of our show and if you're friends of ours, it helps get our name out there if this gets if this does happen. Absolutely. So please, you know. And JDF is awesome enough that we you posted it on his page and yes. he liked it. So Please uh, go ahead and share, retweet, sign. I, I'm in retrospect starting to think that maybe I should have made that <laughs> made that petition JDF versus CM Punk plus legalized weed I bet everyone would have signed it because <laughs> I ran into a legalized marijuana petition and it's got like over 20,000 signatures and I was like hmm yeah right well cross pollination might have done us good <laughs> it's like do you want to see a wrestler in a Power Ranger fight and smoke some weed this is the petition for you <laughs> As always, check out uh, Facebook, Comics Remixed, our YouTube, all of our back issues of the Spinner Rack are up there with hardly any views because, you know, they're old. Nobody loves us. There's no love for old material. Well, you know, I feel bad because I put some of that stuff up and didn't really think about it in retrospect. Like, WrestleMania special. How many people will listen to that before WrestleMania this year and thought they were getting talk about this year's WrestleMania and that was from two years ago? <laughs> so, my bad. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it fresh for the future. Anyway, anything, comments, emails, questions, Brian Comics Remix, Junior Comics Remix, Alex Comics Remix, check out Alex's toy reviews. What did he do this week? Um, I think a Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. I man. believe so. I'm not 100%. I don't sure. know, man. That Thor, I'm still like all about that. That Thor on the brain with the spinning hammer, yeah, that thing's boss. Select. That's boss. So, see you Wednesday. The lockup. Er. Peace. <laughs>